Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 1st, uh, 2017 City Council meeting. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 7 p.m., and our newly installed chief, fire chief, Mason Hurley, would you please honor us and lead us in the flag salute? of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chief. It's good to see your family. I haven't seen them in a long time. And and welcome, not welcome, because you've been here for so many years, but, uh, but uh, congratulations on your promotion. Hey. Roll call. Director Maloney? Perea? Here. Johnson Santos? Lewis? Here. Silvera? Present. Walter? Here. Do you have a quorum? Let's go on to item four, consideration of approval of agenda. Do I have a motion? Mr. Silvera? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. Freya? Second. Motion by Silvera, second by Faria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Opposition? None carried. Public forum. Members of the public may address this council members on any item that is within the interest uh, of the jurisdiction of the city council, which includes agenda and non-agenda items. No action will be taken on non-agenda items, and speakers are limited to a five-minute presentation. Detailed guidelines are posted on the council chamber informational table. And when you approach the podium, please state your name and city of residence. If you have a cell phone, please place them on vibrate or uh, turn them off. Is there anyone who wishes to speak at the public forum? Uh, no noisemakers. <laughs> Captain with the Salvation Army of Los Banos, and we are here today to make the city aware of the kettle season. Our bell ringing season starts on Monday, November 20th. And we are inviting the public to register to ring and help the Salvation Army raise monies for its 2018 budget season. We are uh, at six locations and we are online this year. So you may register online and choose your location and your time frame. We just want to make you aware that this fundraising season accounts for 75% of our budget. And we are... Um, as many people are challenged to continue with the services that we're providing based on budget cuts. So we appreciate greatly your support and we hope to see you out there. We welcome a celebrity bell ringing day where the city can come out and select a location and ring. Uh, we're going out to the schools, uh, having encouraging a mascot day. We're trying to be creative and invite the public to participate in this because this is their Salvation Army. What we're trying to do through our services and programs is better the community, the families support them in whatever area they need. We are going to have a $20 challenge day where we are trying to match a $1,000 uh, donation. And we are also, what's the other one? Real Estate Wednesday, where we're going to be, uh, the real estate offices of Los Banos will man kettle sites and ring for a day. So those are so far the opportunities we have for the city to help the Salvation Army raise money for the citizens of Los Banos. And as you guys know, you know exactly what it goes for. You know, our homeless, our seniors, families in need. Um, Motels, uh, we, oh, sorry, um, Bonnie Roberts, you want just my lost, address Just Los Banos. Yeah, just Los Banos, <laughs> okay. Um, as you know, our monies stay here. Um, our monies help for motels, food. Uh, we feed um, every day. We give enough 
um, meals in the bas in their bags that they pick up for t breakfast and a lunch. So, and there's about 25 that come, 15 regular, 25 because we get workers that come in afterwards uh, for food bags. So this helps get our food for uh, our food boxes each month, our turkey drive coming up. So we just want to be part of this city. We've been in here for a long time and we continue, we want to continue to stay to help. And our goal is to make sure that every family has a home. Whether if it's in this city or if we have to, you know, exit them out, that, that, that can happen too, you know, because sometimes we have to take them someplace else. Okay, but thank you. And thank hope you. hope to see you out here. Okay. <laughs> Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at the public forum? Good evening, I'm John Fulton, and I see you on the agenda tonight I'm from Las Manas. We have the MCAG presentation on transportation, so this will be on the on the agenda tonight for review. So I'd just like to ask the, the council and the mayor, in the next round of planning to 2042, you're looking at the next general plan, don't make the mistakes we made in the last one. As you review the transportation issues for this next general, general plan, Make sure you incorporate pedestrians, bicycles, and electric vehicles. So in the next round between now and 2042, there will be six countries in Europe that will eliminate internal combustion engines. It's going to be all electric. So we need to have some place here in Las Panas to attract people with electric vehicles. We also need for schools some way for children to get to schools that's healthy rather than breathing the bus fumes and their commuter parents, cars idling. At the new junior high school, I counted 75 to 85 vacant car stalls and only two or three empty bicycle stalls. So we need to look at encouraging the students to get there on their own. We need to look at healthy ways to, to, to transport people around the city. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Patricia McCoy of Los Banos. Um, I am the chair, chairperson of the fourth annual Los Banos Veterans Parade. I'm also a United States Air Force veteran. The Veterans Parade is being held this Saturday, November 4th at 11 o'clock a.m. We're honoring all veterans, but this year's parade is dedicated to Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm veterans. We once again have been granted permission for the C-130 flyover. That will be at the end of our parade, approximately 12 o'clock noon, and it'll be best seen over the Veterans Memorial Hall. Um, this year is looking like it's gonna be a great parade. We have between 55 and 60 entries so far. So just wanna say thank you. Hi, and um, Mike Hughes also with the VFW in Los Banos. I'm the VFW commander and uh, I live here in Los Banos, have for a lot of years, and we'd just like to thank the council for your help with this and also in invite you afterwards. We're going to have food at the hall, and we, uh, we, we expect a, a really good turnout because we're getting a real good response this year. So come and join us and uh, honor the veterans in Los Banos. Do you want to tell them about your breakfast, too? The uh, Ladies Auxiliary is having a breakfast starting from 7 to 9, and it will be, uh, it will be at the Veterans Memorial Hall, 615 E Street. Uh, tickets are $7 a, uh, $7 a breakfast. <clears throat> and, uh, and after the parade, come over. We have, uh, we have some hot dogs and uh, chips, sodas. And... Thank you. May I have permission to give you some flyers? Yes. Yes, would you give them to uh, our city clerk? Yes, I sure will. Go ahead, Mr. Freya. I want to send my regrets. I have a, we have a family funeral Saturday morning, so I would, as you know, I'm always there, and I would be there otherwise. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Mr. Freya. Okay.
But, oh, anyone else who would like to speak to public forum? Not seeing or hearing anyone, I will now close the public forum and go on to item six. Consideration of approval of agenda, or consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are considered routine. We voted on in one motion, unless removed from the consent agenda by a city council member. And tonight we have Director Malney. Items on the consent agenda are as follows. Warrant numbers 207-325 through 207-510 in the amount of $983,532.02. I mean $983, First quarter investment report for fiscal year 2017-2018. Minutes for the October 18, 2017 City Council meeting. And the items are to be approved as submitted. Okay, is there any council member who would like to remove an item for discussion? Director Lewis, or Council Member Lewis? No, Mr. Mayor, but if there are no uh, requests for removal of an item, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Ms. Freya. Second. Okay. Motion by Lewis, second by Freya. I thought we were going to have to wait here. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None carried. Let's go on to item seven. Merced Council presentation. Chris, oh, Merced College, uh, uh, Merced College presentation. Chris Fatelli, superintendent slash president. <laughs> With emphasis on the slash. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Well, good evening, uh, Mayor Velotta, City Council. A privilege to, uh, to present to you tonight. Uh, I want to give you an update on what Merced College is up to. Uh, as well as what we're doing in this wonderful city of Los Banos. Uh, I have with me, as, as you all know uh, very well, uh, Joe Gutierrez. He's our board president. Uh, he's here in the audience tonight sporting his uh, Warriors jacket. Um, but uh, we want to we share some exciting things. We are doing um, a lot of work here in Los Banos. I've been working with several of you in the city. Uh, and so I uh, want to give you a, a bit of a highlight. Uh, two of the items are initiatives that we're doing district-wide, uh, meaning at both the main campus in Merced as well as at the Los Banos campus uh, here in Los Banos, and that's the educational master plan, and we also have our guided pathways initiative, and both of those will impact this community. And then last but not least, I want to just talk about some of the project programs and exciting happenings right here in Los Banos. I'll start with our educational master plan. Uh, we uh, have engaged with a group called the Collaborative Brain Trust, and uh, and not just because they have a fantastic name, uh, but because they uh, are going to do some good work for our entire district. Every seven to eight years, community colleges engage in master planning, and so this will serve as our framework and our master planning for growth in the next um, uh, five to seven years for the district. What we'll do once we complete the educational master plan is we'll create our, um, our facilities master plan and our strategic plan. And what that means for Los Banos is uh, as we look at opportunities for growth in this community uh, and we look at workforce demand and we look at industries and we look at things that uh, matter most to the potential workforce and the, the existing workforce, we'll begin to expand appropriately. So right now we're in the data collection stage. Uh, and it started uh, last month. We're meeting with constituents throughout our service area, including Los Banos. We'll have a forum here on November 17th, and we'll make sure everyone uh, um, at the dais gets an invitation to participate in that. And then our consultants will be reaching out to, if they haven't already, uh, some of you with the hopes of sitting down and discussing uh, what the economic forecast is and the, the workforce demand in this area for the next 10 to 15 years so we can plan accordingly as we look at our educational programs. Um, as I mentioned, uh, phase one uh, started in September uh, and uh, we will be finishing up uh, phase one really at the end of November, even though it says on your slide phase two starts in November. Um, but phase one is really that discovery phase. We're doing surveys and collecting qualitative data. Phase two is uh, really putting all that data together so we can start to analyze what's most important to us and the um, service offerings, including out here at the Los Banos campus. And I'll speak a little bit about one of the areas we'll be expanding in the next uh, 
in the next year uh, out here in the career technical education arena. And then last but not least will be our goal setting, uh, and we'll have specific plans and strategic goals as it relates to our Los Banos campus. So that's one of the, uh, really one of the most important documents we have uh, for planning purposes, uh, and it really does serve as our framework. We encourage anyone in the city uh, to, to please get engaged in that process, work with our dean, uh, Dr. Latham, uh, contact me or others if you have ideas on what we should be doing as it relates to education, specifically, of course, higher education uh, on, in Los Banos. In addition to that, uh, one of the other big initiatives for our district right now is our Guided Pathways Framework. And I think this really will uh, transform how we uh, serve our students. I won't go through each component of Guided Pathways, but the idea is that we're working very closely with students all the way from the ninth grade level all the way to, to year 16 when they go to uh, and finish hopefully uh, a bachelor's degree if that's what they want to do. Part of that's creating structured onboarding processes. It's creating uh, a connection with high school students, making sure we have college classes at the high schools, embedded counseling, uh, student services, which we, all, we now have at most of your uh, high schools here in this area. Uh, but it's also redesigning our curriculum. Uh, creating acceleration programs, making sure our students can go right into a college level English or math if they're qualified to do so. Um, so you'll hear more about this, I think, uh, in the next year, year and a half, but we're doing some good work behind the scenes, and uh, we want to see our students step in, succeed, finish in two years, whether they go straight into the workforce or transfer, we want them to do that in a seamless fashion. Uh, if they want to come to us in one semester and get a certificate in welding, that's okay too. Uh, we want to make sure that we, uh, we set them up for success uh, and uh, create stackable programs. When they do decide to come back, they can continue on their, their degree path if they so choose. Specifically, uh, what's happening here in Los Banos at the Los Banos um, campus? Uh, I'll give you a bit of a, a, an enrollment update. In fact, I'll just start scrolling through these. Um, our credit headcount here uh, in the district right now, uh, this past year, uh, was about 2,000 uh, students. And that's about 18% of our total enrollment at Merced College. So that's significant for a campus this size uh, to be housing 2,000 plus students. And uh, our Los Benos campus has been growing over the years. Uh, and uh, this year is still to be determined. We'll see what the, the end result is, but it's looking positive. Uh, the next slide is our full-time equivalent students. So we count enrollments by full-time status. And in Los Banos, our full-time equivalent students uh, total is about 1,200, and that's about 14% of our district. Uh, so a significant amount of students are being served here. Um, the top majors in Los Banos are nursing uh, being number one, criminal justice number two, uh, and then the transfer degree uh, the general breadth transfer into the CSU or I get I get C system, which is our UC system. After that is liberal studies. Uh, that's students wanting to go into the teaching profession for the most part. Psychology, business administration, biological science, child development, art, and kinesiology. Uh, and uh, what we want to do in the next several years is expand our offerings in career technical education. Uh, we've got a strong general education program at the Los Banos campus. Uh, but we know that our students in this area, based on high school programs uh, and based on the, the data that we receive, we know they want career technical education programs as well. Uh, we've actually been working uh, uh, with uh, your uh, city to identify potential uh, locations uh, for a welding lab. So thank you uh, for your assistance on that. And uh, we think we're getting close to identifying a space and what we want to do is bring our fast track welding program to the Los Banos community. Uh, and this will hopefully be the first of many. We're using uh, funds from the state uh, that we're receiving through a strong workforce uh, grant uh, to lease the space for at least three years, make sure there's the demand here, hire a full time instructor, uh, and open a space for students to uh, get a certi certificate uh, welding, or excuse me, a welding certificate in one semester. Uh, so that will require them to come five days a week, uh, eight to five each day, uh, and they'll finish within 18 weeks. If they want to continue on to the next level, they can go through another 18-week uh, course program. And uh, this is the model of private institutions 
it's a model we have on the main campus and we've got a huge waiting list for it so I think it'll be a huge success over here um, the next slide's a little outdated actually I noticed that when I was sitting in the uh, the audience uh, we've been I've talked to many of you about uh, the importance of uh, exploring a safe path for students to get out to our campus and uh, I've talked with the mayor I've talked with the city manager uh, I know that um, trustee Gutierrez has spoken one-on-one uh, -on -one with most if not all of you and uh, most recently we had a meeting out at Los Panos campus several of you were there uh, MCAG uh, uh, helped facilitate uh, that meeting and uh, they're here tonight and we certainly appreciate that uh, they have a approved uh, funds to uh, put out a bid for a scope of work so we know what it would take to actually put uh, a safe trail uh, bike trail walking trail skateboarding whatever they want to do uh, but a safe trail to get out to our campus and we know from experience in Merced that that makes a big difference many of our students don't have vehicles uh, a lot of them are right now walking along the highway which isn't safe and we want to do whatever we can to partner with you all in the county to get a safe path out there this is a small this is too small to even try to describe but you have the slide in front of you and then uh, last but not least uh, we've been working on a food forest we'll invite all of you out to the the campus for a ribbon cutting and I uh, hope that you'll come uh, in mid-December it's going to be a wonderful space for our students uh, it's going to be a, a great outdoor learning space uh, and learning lab but also a place that uh, the city can use uh, and organizations in the area to uh, to host uh, seminars outside seminars um, and uh, we can partner with nonprofit organizations that want to do some uh, some workshops out there as well so uh, that's the footprint there to have an amphitheater uh, that the the right hand corner is is dirt that's what you're looking at but for us that's exciting because it's, it's actually moving in the right direction we'll have uh, plants and trees soon uh, we just opened a student success lab on the campus invite you to come out there a wraparound services to help students uh, with what they need inside the classroom that's my presentation update on what we're doing can I answer any questions uh, Chris please continue to work and advertise MCAG with the bus until the footpath becomes a reality we have an excellent bus system in Merced County and anything that we can do to stop students from walking out to the college in the interim uh, I think MCAG is the answer right now uh, to setting up uh, uh, more dial -a ride more uh, more busing, whatever we need to do, I'm sure MCAG would be on board to make sure that students are safe going out there. And if we could advertise uh, that uh, that bus program uh, even more, it would be even better for uh, to let people know because I, I'm not sure how many students actually know about it, and maybe print up some schedules uh, just specifically to Merced College. Yeah, and no, Patrick, good point. Very Patrick, good point. we'd love to help you with that. Yeah. Yeah. So since he's the new bus manager, he uh... <laughs> no a point well taken. We actually a couple of years ago started getting student equity dollars from the state to help with transportation. And one of the things that uh, we look forward to sitting down uh, with all partners is what can we do to use some of those dollars to help our students with transportation. We do mm -hmm. promote the the um, uh, the the schedule right now, uh, but it it isn't quite diverse enough to get students everywhere they need to be right. or convenient so we'll continue to work with them thank you thank you mr. Silvera yes um, I know you guys have ag programs over at the the main campus do you foresee bringing some ag programs out to the Los Banas campus partly why I put in the presentation about the educational master plan is uh, because that's what that data will tell us uh, you know we we need to hear from the community we need to look at the the data as far as where the jobs are where um, where jobs will be 10 years from now we know this is an agricultural community uh, we know we need to expand the offerings in career technical education uh, but I would be remiss if I bypass that process uh, but of course my hope is in the next 10 to 15 years we look back and we we have some very comparable and robust career technical education programs as we build out the Los Banos campus and the facilities master plan there and continue to look at some of these fast track CT programs but ag mechanized ag uh, heavy machinery uh, of course welding uh, expanding child development again at some point looking at those types of programs that can lead to jobs is why we exist and so we want to make sure those programs align with what the economic needs are here perfect thank you mm -hmm. mrs. Lewis thank you mr. mayor 
Um, I just have a couple of questions, um, and and I hearing about you know the ag programs that you're possibly looking at starting in uh, areas in industrial arts, but uh, what I'm concerned about is for the future and. Uh, we're looking at the success of young kids coming out of two-year colleges and even some nonprofit programs in the Bay Area that are geared more towards the dot-com industry. And we haven't been able to even think about having any of those jobs in this area because we don't have the workforce trained for those areas. Um, in Fresno, they have um, small incubator companies that are looking at their grounds being fertile for bringing in a small company in, in that type of industry. So what is Merced Junior College doing in regards to this particular science area? You've got cyber, sign, uh, cr um, cyber crimes, which is a big thing, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a big market to be open for people mm -hmm. to get yeah. a job in. Uh, the dot-com industry, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to see where we're looking towards the future to have our young people have another opportunity to have a higher paying job. Yeah, and you make good points. I mean, again, that's what the educational master planning process is. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not committing us to an ag program or committing us to a, a horticultural program uh, or a, a cybersecurity program until we know what this community needs and wants, and that's what the next six to seven months look like. We're just on the front end of that. So part of that is engaging with all of you, stakeholders in the community, business and industry, working with our high school partners, uh, looking at the pipeline of what programs they're preparing students for. And I've asked the consultants that are working on our educational master plan, uh, because Los Banos is a little different um, in that you have so many commuters, uh, I don't want them just looking at the data within your, your area right here, but I also want them looking at the data of where the workforce is commuting to uh, because we need to be training them as well. And so to your point, we know that cybersecurity uh, is probably third or fourth uh, as far as growing industries and potential opportunities for us in this area. We, we've already received that data back. And so that most likely will be on the list of the types of programs we're going to look at expanding to. Uh, but that's why we need to let the process play itself out, hear from people like you and others in the community, and make sure we get it right. Because the last thing I want is for us to create programs where, one, we don't have a demand for because that's not sustainable, and, two, that's not leading to jobs. Uh, and, um, you know, we, we know qualitatively that some of these jobs exist, uh, but we also need to, to pull in all the stakeholders to tell us what, what it is we need in this community and then we can build out. Uh, so we haven't identified any one program uh, besides the welding program that we're going to start. Uh, at the end of this year, I'd be happy to come back and uh, share that, the, the results uh, from the, the process for our educational master plan because it will create that roadmap and it will allow us to look out two, three, four, ten years and Los Banos and the programs we're building, and I think it will align quite well with some of the things you've already mentioned. Yeah. Well, if uh, I know you said that you've reached out to our city manager and the mayor, but if you can reach out to the rest of the council uh, via our emails, uh, I'm sure that we will respond to you. I certainly will. And okay. Would be happy to. Yeah, thank you. Feed you any ideas that I may have. Okay. okay Very good. Thank you. We'll do. You got it. Thank you, Mr. Freer. I'm pleased to see everything. Calls. Uh, of course, I teach out there. Yeah. Um, uh, couple of classes and it really is uh, it's an exciting place to be you have some very uh, it, it it feels like a college it has the energy of a of a, of a serious academic environment um, and it's because you have some really excellent professors and you have very excellent student body um, and it's a pleasure to teach out there and expansion of education in all these different realms because Los Banos is on that Bridge. We are in the agricultural world, and our population commutes into the tech world. Those are the two big uh, areas that we have here. Seeing a welding class, I know a lot of uh, students leave town, leave the state to go study welding. And if, if we had welding certification here, it would be great, which ties very closely to ag and industrial, which, in, like I said, the valley jobs and then the technology adding that. So whatever I can do to help um, from my seat, I'm happy to do to see education expand because education is what value we're all the value of anything comes from. So we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Mrs. Santos? No. 
I mean, Hi. we've spoken in the past concerning yes. the technical pro technical program. So I just I can't wait to see that come in because I, I know that's a big thing. Me myself being a, a pharmacy technician, I know it was a huge step for me. So can't wait for that. And also the amphitheater, I think it'll be great. So thank you. Sorry to come in in the middle of your your, uh, your presentation. No problem. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Chris, what's the limitation on accepting more nursing candidates, more, more, more nursing students? Is it placement? In, funding, uh, funding and placement are the two. Um, someone asked me recently what it would take to replicate our nursing program, and uh, that's a question I can't answer. It's too daunting. But uh, for us to expand our nursing program, particularly out in this area, uh, we need clinical sites. Uh, they're required uh, by law to have so many hours. Uh, in the clinical environment and do their clinical practicals. Um, so uh, that's part of it. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to see us do, and I'm, I'm working with the dean out here, is to utilize the technology we have uh, to better serve the students on, on this side of the county that would like to go into the nursing profession. Um, the clinical side is going to be very difficult for us, but we can, we can work on that one. Um, do we have any placement now at this hospital? Uh, I believe we do. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have we have clinical sites in Los Banos. So okay. I don't know exactly where they're, but I think we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can um, you check on that for me? Yeah, I'll, I'll let you okay. know for certain. All but right. I, I'm I'm ninety two percent sure. Okay, maybe ninety three. Okay. Uh, and uh, but that's really it. It's the clinical sites. But w the hope would be that we can start doing a small cohort over here of students who can uh, video conference into the lectures there, and then we need to find a place for them to do their clinicals. So, but it's doable. We can expand yeah, that. Well, I'd like to help with that because okay. I think the nursing program is, yeah. is very beneficial for this community. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Any other questions? Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you for all coming. very much. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Okay. Item number eight Merced County Association of Governments MCAG Regional Transportation Plan presentation. And tonight we have with us the Executive Director, Patrick Pittenger, and with him tonight is our Transportation Director, Matt Fell. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Patrick Pittenger. I'm the Executive Director of MCAG, and I'm pleased to be here before you. And um, just a little overview before I turn it over to Matt to talk about the Regional Transportation Plan, which is uh, one of several really important things we've got going on right now. Uh, just for the benefit of the public, uh, MCAG serves as the Metropolitan Planning Organization, which is the federally required body for the uh, for Merced County. Uh, in addition to that, we also administer uh, Measure V funds, uh, which is there are now 24 counties in the state that are what's called self-help counties, which is a very important concept because Measure V now provides uh, funding that is uh, generated here in Merced County and can only be used here in Merced County for uh, transportation projects. And it's a very important concept because uh, at the federal level, transportation uh, funds have been lagging for quite some time and uh, there isn't any great expectation of improvements. Uh, there's always possibilities, but uh, it's very important that these funds are local and they're used locally. And there's a couple of things that make our agency uh, very unique. Um, there are, are councils of governments uh, all over the state, but ours is quite unique because in addition to providing those services I just described, we also serve as the, uh, the Transit Joint Powers Authority for the entire county. We operate the bus system, and additionally, we operate the Regional Waste Management Authority. So two landfills, the Billy Wright Landfill, the 59 Landfill just north of Merced. And I want to make sure that I point out that uh, on our governing board is your, is your mayor, the Honorable Mike Palalta, and we also have a technical review board, and your city manager sits on that, and on a monthly basis, we bring uh, a variety of items that go uh, first before a citizens committee of uh, uh, countywide folks, and then and then before the technical review board, which includes your city manager and the other city managers and county CEO, and then finally before the governing board, which includes your mayor and other mayors and uh, county board members. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn over the mic to Matt Fell, who is our transportation planning expert, and going to tell you about a very important project underway because, oh, one thing I forgot, the other thing we're unique for is that Measure V passed, and uh, and that, uh, obviously, we're 24 counties have passed Measure V, but we, we as a county did so without a specified list of projects, and to our knowledge, that is unique. Um, Everybody else we've been able to find has all had a list of projects that was brought to the voters and approved. 
and we're in a very different situation. We have the money is now coming in. Much of the money goes straight to the municipalities, including Los Banos. But 44% um, of the money is uh, is unobligated. It's it's up for discussion review, and that's uh, integral to what Matt's going to tell you about. So, with that, I'll turn it over to Matt. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Um, again, my name is Matt Fell. I'm a planner with Merced County Association Governments, here to talk about the Regional Transportation Plan. Um, so what is the Regional Transportation Plan? Well, it's a road to the future. Um, hopefully our road to the future will be smooth and not bumpy, um, and I think that there are some good prospects for that now that there's additional funding, which I'll talk about a little bit. Um, what is the RTP? Well. The Regional Transportation Plan is a long-term plan. It does cover 25 years, so we're looking a long distance out into the future. The main reason for that is some of the big projects take a very long time to plan and design and then finally build, and, and getting funding for those can take a very long time. So that's one of the reasons why we look so far out into, out into the future. Um, it is a document that guides transportation investments, so a lot of different types of investments in transportation have to be identified in the RTP. Um, we look at regional issues. We look at multiple modes. So we look at, you know, traffic congestion on the highways. We look at road maintenance. We also look at bicycle and pedestrian projects um, because those can have a benefit on air quality, and that's a regional issue. Um, we link with land use, housing, and employment. That's very important that the RTP is based on and serves the growth projections in the general plans. So transportation is there to connect people from where they live to where they work and where they go to school. And so we need to know where those places are going to be in the future. And that's all based on your general plan and the other general plans. And of course, we have to follow numerous federal and state laws. So we do that when we prepare our plan. Regional planning is basically just multiple jurisdictions. So in Merced County, we have the six cities and the county and all working together through MCAG. So the good news, Patrick mentioned Measure V passing. Um, I have the Measure V pie up there on the screen I'm going to talk about for a second. And then also SB1 passed at the state level, which is the gas tax hike. Um, yes, it's a tax increase, but it's going to pay for a lot of additional transportation dollars, especially fix-it-first type stuff. So there's a lot of maintenance backlog. Um, gas tax hasn't been raised in 25 years. Um, so there's a lot to catch up on, and so that's going to provide a... a a lot of additional funds for those kinds of projects. Measure V, uh, as Patrick mentioned, the, there's the orange slices, there's the green slices. The green slices are the local projects. Those projects are decided by this council, the other councils, and the Board of Supervisors. So there's a formula where those, four, those funds are distributed down based on population and road miles to the local jurisdictions, and then this council decides what to do with the Los Banos money. Um, the orange and the yellow slices are the regional projects, and there's two committees. There's a regional projects committee for the east and for the west, and they recommend projects to the MCAG board. And as Patrick mentioned, there's not a list already, so that list is to be developed. And all of those projects in the, the regional projects have to be identified in the RTP. So that's the link, that's the connection to the RTP. Um, for Measure B regional projects to proceed, they have to be listed in the RTP. Um, how do we do this planning? Well, we do a lot of outreach. Um, of course, we do a lot of technical work, but we also do a lot of outreach. So we are doing our second round of public workshops right now. We had one in Los Banos here um, last Monday, and we had one in Livingston last Wednesday a week ago, and there's one in Merced tomorrow. Um, and we also have an online version of that, uh, which I'm going to talk about, I think, on the next slide. And we're going to get as much feedback as we can, and we have some surveys on the website. And all that information and, and the preferences and the thoughts of the public, we're going to bring all that to our standing committees and to our board so that they can make a decision on which scenario to carry forward into our, the rest of the plan, and basically to prepare the draft plan. So we're looking at releasing the draft plan in the spring, and then it'll be available for uh, adoption in the summer. Um, that's basically our timeline. We've also been doing a lot of presentations. Our outreach consultant has done several presentations here to community groups in Los Banos and throughout the county, um, again, to get the word out on this planning process and to let people know how they can get involved. And one of the, uh, well, here's the workshops again that I mentioned uh, last week and the, the 
uh, one tomorrow in Merced. We also have one on Monday in Planada that we added. Um, and at these workshops, people are looking at all the information for these scenarios, and they get to vote on their preferred scenario, and they also get to vote on some other things, including some of the big regional projects. Um, so that's, that's a good way for folks to get involved and learn about the process and also make their voice heard and their vote on you know what, what scenario should be considered. Um, and I want to let you know that our website, which is mercedregionalvision.com, we have a survey on there. It's on there now. So it's basically replicating all the things that are happening at the workshop. A lot of people are not able to attend a workshop, so we provide the online survey so people can see there all the information. There is quite a bit of information. I want more in advance. Um, there's a lot to digest, but it's a lot of good information. There's pictures. There's graphs to help, hopefully, help explain all that. And then you get to take a survey, and all those survey results will be compiled, as I said, and brought to our board. Um, and then, of course, you will be included in um, when we release the draft. We'll let you know about that, and there'll be an opportunity for comment, and there'll be another round of workshops and open houses in the spring. Um, and with that, we have my contact information. If you have questions about the RTP at any time, um, let me know. And we also have our outreach manager, Kendall Flint, uh, doing those presentations and helping get the word out. Matt, there are, um, um, I was talking to Patrick, there are other pots of money like the, the STEP uh, money mm -hmm. from the state and also uh, some money left over in the RTF. Uh, are we going to kind of wait to see all the projects and then so we can do multi-funding from, from different levels to see how to fund these projects and how that's going to be dis uh, distributed, the money is going to be distributed and, and wait for that list in June to kind of put everything together? Kind of, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, a, a, a big part of the... RTP is that list and multiple lists actually probably this time mm -hmm. of different kinds of projects. And we do want to collect all the information from all the jurisdictions of all the possible regional projects, again, so that they can be there to be talked about and discussed going forward with Measure B. But also, and this is key, to identify the need for those other funding sources. So there is quite a bit of money out there that hasn't been available for a number of years. Um, but it's available now. And so now's the time to get those lists in our RTP so that when opportunities come up, uh, oppor opportunities that exist now and opportunities that may be coming soon, we have projects that are you know, either in development or ready to go. Well, so I'm glad to hear that because that will make it fair for every jurisdiction and east side and west side. And so, uh, so that's good news. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mrs. Lewis. Yes, Sorry. Don't leave yet. Yeah. Um, I noticed at the last meeting uh, we had pretty much the same cross-section of people that come to these type of meetings in Los Banos. One of the things that I have concern about uh, in the outreach to our residents here is, number one, the time of the meeting, because we have a large community of people who do commute, and number two, uh, just exactly how your organization is going to get the information out there to the public so that, number one, they know there's an online survey, and number one, um, number two, how are they going to find out? You know, there has to be some sort of mechanism that you're going to use to get a, a good cross-section of people to possibly take that survey. So I appreciate the fact that there is a survey online, but I want to know how that information is going to reach the public. Sure. Um, so we do, we have a number of channels that we get the word out. You know, we, we put it on our Facebook and our Twitter and our website. Um, any help we can get from the jurisdictions or anybody, quite frankly, who wants to help um, us with that outreach effort, um, especially online and mobile and those kinds of things, those are really beneficial. Help get it out to exactly the kinds of folks um, who wouldn't be able to come to a workshop. Um, so we appreciate any help that can be provided there. Um, we do have our flyers. We've been talking about these workshops for over a month, you know, that the dates have been available. We have our newsletter. Um, we have all sorts of connections that way. Um, have you thought about doing a mass mailer? Uh, through the postal system, you don't have to have the name and address of a particular person to do a mass mailer. You could just... Uh, pick X amount of people in a certain address area and send out a mailer 
uh, so that they can have the information to know that either there is an online survey at, or that there is another meeting coming up in the springtime. Um, not everybody knows that you've got a website, that there's a project going on uh, in regards to transportation for the future. But if you send them something, you know, I'm pretty sure you're going to maybe get a better response via online for the survey that you have for people who may not be able to come to a meeting. So I'm just looking at some way that your organization can spend a little bit of money uh, to get the information out to the residents in Los Banos so that they have an opportunity to participate and not be left out of um, the circle of what's, being ha what's happening uh, with this survey and participating uh, in what their desires are for future transportation from the west side. So that, I, that's just kind of my take on it. I, I, I really get a little bit discouraged knowing that, you know, there's Facebook and all these things out there, but you have to know that there's something on that site or that there is that particular site that someone needs to go to to find out about this important event that's getting ready to happen in the future for transportation for our area. So that's another way of doing it, is, is to mail it out to a certain number of people that you can figure out the demographics and figure out who's going to respond to you um, in regards to a survey and future meetings. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Matt, maybe uh, uh, Marissa College could help you a little bit with that too and getting the word out to the students and maybe talk about some surveys over there in some of the classes. So, okay. All right. Any other comments from Council? Well, thank you both for coming this evening. We really appreciate it. Come back. Okay? Thank you. Okay, let's go on to item nine, public hearing. If you challenge the proposed uh, action described, in, uh, described herein in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described herein or in written correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public hearing. Item 9A, public hearing. To receive public comment and consideration of an amendment to Title IX, Chapter 3, Article 28 of the Los Angeles Municipal Code relating to signs. And we're going to have a uh, presentation for our Community and Economic Development Director, Elms. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. So I'm going to keep this brief, as um, you may recall, back in um, on the 20, or excuse me, the 18th of October, the City Council waived the first reading and introduced Ordinance Number 1158. Uh, for the amendment to the sign ordinance uh, back on that date. So uh, just to recap, there is a minor amendment that we are asking um, at this time that the proposal consists of um, sign alterations and minor adjustments. It also includes adding language specifically to automobile dealership signage, allowing criteria uh, for that special type of use as um, those uses uh, don't have a building to advertise with. Their advertisement is outdoors as their operations are outdoors. And then there's also temporary signs other than windows that are um, also windblown devices. Um, and then we also talked about portable signs, A-frame and I-frame signs, and the change there um, that has a size restriction as well as a requirement that applies to all zoning districts. And then um, we did include language based on the discussion, city council discussion on the 18th that requires uh, A-frame and I-frame signs to be professionally designed and constructed of durable materials. Um, so with that, staff is requesting that the City Council would uh, open the public hearing and receive public testimony and then uh, waive the second reading and adopt ordinance number 1158 by title um, to amend the sign ordinance as presented. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, if there are no comments from Council at this time, I would like to open the public hearing and receive public comment on ordinance number 1158 amending title 9 chapter 3 article 28 the Los Angeles municipal code relating to signs is there anyone who wishes to speak on that subject 
Not seeing or hearing anyone, I will now close the public hearing, bring it back to council level, and do I have questions or a, uh, uh, a motion? Mrs. Lewis. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, just one thing. Uh, when we heard the uh, first reading on this uh, at our last meeting, one of the requests that I made is that we send out notification to our business community. Uh, we had an issue before uh, where we had a lot of noncompliance with our uh, current um, sign ordinance and it became necessary to notify the business community of exactly what was expected. Um, so I would like to make sure that that would be part of the um, uh, requirement that, that our staff would do along with the uh, approval of this ordinance this evening is to send out a mailer to our business community so that they will have um, copies of what our, our new ordinance and code will be for signs. Council, any complaints? You good with that? Okay. All right. So. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Lewis, are you finished? Yeah, I was just going to make a motion, okay. but I think Mr. Silvera, Silvera has a, a statement he'd like. Okay. Ms. Silvera. D just so I, I'm clear on what uh, Mrs. Lewis is asking, that, that's not part of the ordinance. That's just directing staff just, to Just directing sure. staff to, yeah. Okay. We're not including it in the motion? No. Yeah. Thank you. But I just want to make sure that it was understood that okay. I had mentioned it uh, at the last meeting and, okay. and requested that, but our city attorney indicated that we should wait until this meeting to make that request. Okay. Alex, Stacy, we good? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. We're good. All right. Mr. Lewis? Okay. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to waive the second reading of ordinance number 1158 as read by title. Okay. Do I have a second? Mrs. Santos? I second that. Motion by Lewis, second by Santos, uh, to waive the second reading of ordinance number 1158. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? None carried. Mrs. Lewis. Yes, and before we move uh, forward, I really want to appreciate, I, pre I want to thank the staff uh, and our city attorney for moving forward on this. Uh, I appreciate the time and effort that you've put into this uh, to include um, our whole community. Uh, in regards to this particular area on the signs. And with that, I'd like to make a motion to uh, adopt ordinance number 1158 as read by title. Mrs. Santos? Second that. Okay, motion by Lewis, second by Santos for the adoption of ordinance number 1158. Uh, Director Melanie? Faria? Yes. Johnson Santos? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Silvera? Yes. Peralta? Yes, motion carried. Let's go on to item B, public hearing. To receive public comment and consideration of conditional use permit and CEQA exemption to allow the use of a Type 47 alcohol license for the on sale, on sale mm -hmm. and general alcohol in conjunction with a bona fide eating establishment for El Campesinos restaurant and bar located at 1639 East Pacheco Boulevard, APN 083. One three zero zero one three. We'll go back to Economic Director, uh, Economic uh, Community Economic Director Elms. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council again. Okay. So a little bit of background and history on this particular. Um, project and applicant. So this particular business, um, El Campesino's Restaurant and Bar, uh, they um, are also formerly known as Tacos Campesinos. Uh, they were previously located at 651 I Street. Um, they had been operational at that location since 2012 and operated with a Type 41. Uh, and then in January of 2016, they were approved by the Las Vegas City Council for a Type 47. Uh, just to describe again, uh, what a Type 41 is, is the on sale of beer and wine in conjunction with an eating place. And a Type 47 is the on sale of general alcohol in conjunction with an eating place. Uh, the project site uh, that is before you tonight, uh, 1639 East Pacheco Boulevard, uh, was the former location of LB Steakhouse. Uh, that 
a particular business left in 2000, uh, excuse me, September of this year and um, have been operational since May of 2014 with the Type 41. Uh, so they were with on sale beer and wine only. Uh, and historically, this particular project site has operated with a Type 47. Uh, as folks may recall, uh, this was the location of Chalet Basque. Um, and prior to that, before that, the, it operated as a bar as well. Uh, so the applicant is requesting uh, to intensify the alcohol license from a Type 41 that is existing now to a Type 47. Um, the Planning Commission on October 11th recommended approval with the proposed conditions of approval that are included within your staff report uh, to the Las Manas City Council. So the proposal before you tonight is a request for a Type 47. Again, this is general alcohol in conjunction with an eating place. This would be for a new business location as they're relocating. They'd be open seven days a week. Sunday through Thursday, conditioned to be operational 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., and then Friday and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. They would be serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're located within the Highway Commercial Zoning District, and they are surrounded by various commercial uses and legal non-conforming residential uses that are within a 300-foot radius of this particular project site. This is the location of 1639 East Pacheco Boulevard. Uh, so it is, as I stated, located within the Highway Commercial Zoning District. Uh, there's a, the Maple Inn, Maple Inn, excuse me, that is to the southwest of this project site. There's non-conforming residential uses to the south and southeast, as well as uh, the vacant Las Margaritas building. And then to the north is um, residential, non-conforming residential uses, and um, a veterinary hospital clinic, as well as Circle K. According to CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act, this project would be categorically exempt per Article 19, Section 15301, in that it is an existing facility and the use of alcohol will not expand uh, the floor print of the building. Uh, general criteria. So according to our municipal code, a conditional use permit uh, must have certain findings in order to be approved. Uh, the municipal code requires three general findings that must be made and I will briefly um, go through them. Um, it has to be in conformance with the general plan in the municipal code. Uh, it would not be a nuisance or detrimental to the public health, safety, morals, comfort, and general welfare. And that the use is compatible with adjacent uses, properties, and neighborhoods. But then the municipal code goes on to uh, require four specific findings when a conditional use is proposed for alcohol and the sale of alcohol. Um, so the first finding is that the use would not contribute to the undue proliferation of such uses in an area where additional ones would not be desired. Two, that the proposal will not adversely affect churches, um, temples, synagogues, uh, schools, or recreational facilities. Three, that the proposal would not interfere with the movement of people, and four, that the proposal, if it is in close proximity to residential uses, would be limited in the hours of operation. Uh, these findings are listed within the staff report, but staff has concluded that the um, location is um, not in the immediate vicinity of any sensitive uses such as churches, schools, or recreational facilities, um, and that uh, the use of the alcohol license is ancillary to the primary use of the restaurant and that the operational characteristics of the restaurant um, are intended to preserve the public health, safety, um, and welfare of the persons um, and property in the vicinity and that conditions of approval have been incorporated to protect those, um, those rights. And um, that the project is located on Pacheco Boulevard and also that conditions of approval have been incorporated that ensure that the proposal would not interfere with the movement of people and 
Um, it is not in the immediate vicinity of residential uses, but as you can see, um, as I stated, we are limiting the hours of operation. The applicant did request to have um, seven days a week operations till 2 a.m., and we restricted that um, use Sunday through Thursday only till 10 p.m. as there are residential uses within a 300 foot radius um, but we did allow their request as conditioned to um, Friday and Saturday uh, to operate until 2 a.m. So the census tract that this particular project is located in is 23.02 and um, the census tract map is located for you on the screen. So the city is divided into four census tracts and as you can see 23.02 um, in terms of land mass is uh, the largest census tract. Um, it does have all of the businesses that are located east of uh, on Pacheco Boulevard within this particular census tract. And within this particular census tract, there are five on sale licenses currently in use. Uh, as of at, it would have been if we had looked at that report from the Alcohol Beverage Control Board um, back in September, we would have seen six. Uh, but this particular location, this project site at 1639 East Pacheco Boulevard, uh, Las Spana Steakhouse, LB Steakhouse, surrendered their license. So we technically don't um, see a new license as that license has been operational there at that particular project site. Uh, they, it's no longer active as they surrendered it, so ABC no longer recognizes that location as having an active uh, license. So this is the location of 1639 East Pacheco Boulevard. This is a photo from Pacheco um, facing east. So public comment, a public hearing notice was published in the Los Angeles Enterprise on October 20th, 2017. And as of the date of this report, no comments have been received. So with that, staff is recommending that the city council adopt resolution number 5908. Um, to approve conditional use permit number 2017-03 um, as conditioned for the use of a type 47 alcohol license at 1639 East Pacheco Boulevard for El Campesino's restaurant and bar. And that concludes my presentation. A representative of the restaurant is here to answer any of your questions. Stacey, what about a security system, camera system? So condition of approval is included. Uh, that particular condition, and I do, uh, that's a great question, Mary, and I do want to highlight that particular condition. Uh, this condition requires that the applicant operator shall have HD quality monitoring cameras with 4K 1080p resolution in the exterior and interior of the restaurant at all times to the satisfaction and approval of the police chief. The applicant shall always maintain the surveillance equipment in working order and keep the video recordings for 30 days to be made available to law enforcement upon request. So that does require security. It is to the satisfaction of our police chief. The business license will not um, be issued for the operation of alcohol without the satisfaction of the police chief. So the chief will sign off on, so if there are any blind spots with the camera and the chief feels and then uh, he can have the, had, it has to be to his satisfaction? Yes. Okay, absolutely perfect. All right, any other questions from council before I open up the public hearing? Okay, I would now like to open the public hearing on uh, uh, city council resolution number 5908. Uh, oh, the approving of conditional use permit number 2017-03 for the use of a Type 47 alcohol license on the on sale of general alcohol and in conjunction with the eating establishment El Campesino's Restaurant and Bar located at 1639 East Pacheco Boulevard. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? Not seeing or hearing anyone, I will now close the public hearing, bring it back to council level, and are there any questions or a motion? Silvera. Mr. Mayor.
Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve City Council Resolution Number 5908 as read by title. Okay. Do I have a second? Mr. Freer. I'll second that motion. Motion by Silvera, second by Freer to approve City Council Resolution Number 5908. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None. Carry. Thank you. Okay. Item C, public hearing. To receive public comment and consideration on a moratorium temporarily prohibiting new massage, massage establishments or relocation or expansion of existing massage establishments within the city of Los Banos pending study and adoption of regulatory and zoning standards. And we'll go again to Community and Economic Development Director Elms. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to uh, defer this particular presentation to our city attorney, Mr. Vaughn. Okay. Mr. Vaughn. Thank you, Mayor, Council, audience. Uh, you'll be disappointed that I do not have a PowerPoint tonight. <laughs> and I will try to walk you through the staff report. I think it's fairly straightforward and self-explanatory. A um, couple comments about it. Uh, about 10 years ago, the state of California and the legislature and their infinite wisdom apparently was lobbied pretty hard by the Massage uh, Council uh, lobby, and it ended up uh, the adoption of Senate Bill 731, which essentially took away uh, regulatory powers of the cities over massage establishments and centralized it with a agency called the California Massage Therapy Council, uh, which meant that no longer did the city uh, license uh, massage establishments or massage therapists and had very limited uh, regulatory control over the manner in which these businesses were operated within the cities. So uh, fast forward about eight or nine years, come to find out that was a really bad idea. Uh, in those eight or nine years, uh, massage establishments proliferated, not so much in Los Banos, but we have seen some growth. And with that, uh, and with the centralized oversight by this uh, agency in Sac Sacramento, uh, cities began to experience uh, significant uh, problems in crime, prostitution, those types of things that uh, go, go along with um, uh, bad actors who have these ma massage establishments. Um, so in 2015, uh, the cities banded together and through the California League of Cities uh, promoted Assembly Bill uh, 1147, which was passed, which restored most but not all of the local regulatory control to the cities uh, of these types of establishments. Um, so. The City of Los Banos' Massage Establishment Ordinance is about 20 years old. It predates both of those um, uh, legislative bills that were passed and is somewhat outdated in terms of what the current law is. Uh, Los Banos has seen an uptick uh, during that interim period of time in terms of the number of massage establishments and most recently has seen an uptick in um, code code violations, uh, criminal activity, and those types of things uh, connected to some of those establishments, not all of them. And so we thought that um, it was time for us to kind of take a breath and update our code sections dealing with the massage establishments. And in the interim, <clears throat> while we're doing that and studying the correct way to move forward to regulate these businesses within uh, what's allowed by Assembly Bill 1147 that we declare a moratorium in order to kind of take a deep breath, set it aside, and, and move forward. So what we're doing tonight is requesting uh, an interim urgency ordinance that would put a stop to any new establishments or the expansion of any existing establishments until we can kind of take a, a look at what this law will allow us to do in terms of regulations of regulating of these businesses. If this is adopted tonight, um, you also will have an opportunity to extend the moratorium by up to two years if we come back with specific findings as to why we should do that and why we can't act within 45 days. The, uh, the intent of staff is to come back to you 
on or about 45 days with a new ordinance which will set up uh, new regulations regarding these establishments so hopefully the moratorium will only be in place for 45 days but uh, it may need to be extended a little bit if we can't uh, get that up and running in time so uh, with that this is a little bit different uh, process than what you're used to uh, the government code allows us to uh, adopt one of these uh, urgency ordinances by a four-fifths vote of the City Council without the normal introduction and second reading so if you decide to go forward tonight the, the, the correct process would be to uh, introduce uh, the ordinance and it's not a first reading excuse me not introduce the ordinance is to waive the first waive the reading of the ordinance I'm sorry waive the reading of the ordinance by a separate motion and then uh, by roll call vote, uh, adopt the ordinance as uh, as read by title. So two actions. Two actions. Okay. Uh, that doesn't require a second reading, and actually the ordinance takes effect the minute that it's adopted. So, and it terminates in 45 days unless uh, unless uh, extended by another vote of uh, four fifths of the uh, of the city council. So, in the discussion point of the. Um, uh, of the staff report, you'll notice that we have re we have uh, some concerns in terms of the increase in illicit activity in some of these establishments and our inability to regulate those with our current uh, massage establishment ordinance. And that's what we're uh, going to try to <clears throat> get a handle on and do a better job with a better tool to regulate these establishments in the future. So that's the purpose of the moratorium. It's, uh, like I said, it's temporary, um, and it's in anticipation of us coming up to uh, meeting the requirements of the new law and doing what uh, we feel is necessary for the, the local agency, the city, uh, to regulate these types of businesses. So I know if you have any specific questions on some of the problems, the chief is here and he can answer those. Um, this is pretty straightforward, I believe. Uh, it's not going to put anybody out of business that's currently in business. It's just going to mean that we're not going to issue a business license or allow any new establishments to come online until we have our ordinance on board. So I'm, I'm, I can answer any questions if you like. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you want me to open up for public hearing or do you want to ask a question first? Sure, go ahead. Mr. Vaughn, so 45 days puts it, by my math, around... Uh, December the 15th so you would need if you didn't have it done by the December 6th meeting you would have to ask ask for an extension there as because there's talk that um, yeah we would probably be back to you in the first meeting of December with an extension and a uh, uh, an update on where we are in our review and study of the of the new regulations and then so, we, so we'd probably be looking at it more like in January very good. That's all I had. And then it's for, it's 45 days, not business days. Calendar days, correct. Thank you. Mrs. Lewis. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, it was the same question. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because we have a weird month in December. I think we only have one meeting in December. Yeah. Uh, any new ordinance would require two readings. Um, it's really a chance for us to kind of gather as the the applicable staff, staff people to figure out what we're going to do, report to you, uh, on in that December meeting as to what we're finding and what we're anticipating and ask you to extend it again but I don't see that we would be extending this moratorium for two years that's that's not our intent at least at this point in time okay all right I will now open up the public hearing is there anyone who wishes to speak on uh, urgency interim ordinance establishing a temporary moratorium and massage estab massage establishments ordinance number one one five nine anyone wish to speak not seeing or hearing anyone, I will now close the public hearing, bring it back to council level. And the first action is to waive the reading. And Mr. Silvera. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to waive the reading of ordinance number 1159 as read by title. Okay, do I have a second? Mr. Freya. I'll second that motion. Motion by Silvera, second by Faria to uh, to waive the first reading. The, all, 
but the, with the first reading of ordinance number, reading, no, no, I'm uh, sorry, wait, 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 let me, let me restate that. Wait, Waive reading. the reading of ordinance number 1159. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? None. Carried. Mr. Silvera. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 1159 as read by title. Mr. Faria. Second. Motion by Silvera, second by Faria to adopt ordinance number 1159. Director Malney? Faria? Yes. Johnson Santos? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Silvera? Yes. Salalta? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, staff. Okay, let's go on to item 10, advisement of public notices, one report. Community yes, and Economic you. Development Director Elms. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so on November 6, 2017, at 5 p.m. at the Community Center Lounge, we will be holding a public meeting. Uh, and this particular meeting would be um, to solicit uh, citizen input on possible activities to be included in an application for the State Community Development Block Grant CDBG program. Uh, the note for this year, the notice of funding availability um, is set at a maximum application limit of $5 million and there's various uh, program activities that the city can apply for and we're soliciting public input into what activities the city should apply for uh, this particular go around. That concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, let's go on to city uh, manager report. Mr. Terrazas. Uh, congratulations, Mason. Uh, it's great to see a, a great turnout for your badge pinning. Um, it's a pleasure to meet your folks, so thanks for bringing them. Um, and look forward to working with you, and looks like you've settled right into your new spot. So thanks, Chief. Hey, let's go on to City Council member reports. Tonight we'll start with Mrs. Lewis. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, I'd like to uh, let the audience know and uh, people who are watching by television that I had the opportunity to attend the Peace for Family Domestic Violence Walk on uh, October the 26th. It was an extraordinary turnout this year. We had a lot of young people who came. And um, it wasn't, uh, we didn't end up at the uh, police annex this year. We went to the community center. And uh, there were a lot of organizations there with information um, and some games for you know the young people to play. So it was a really great turnout this year. And the testimony of one lady was very heart-rendering, and um, it really touched me. But it, it always does to hear how people who suffer through domestic violence are able to finally get enough strength to move forward and flee from uh, the, the clutches of that particular um, event and move on with their lives and accomplish some really successful things in life. So um, I really want to thank that organization for all they do for the residents here in Los Banos and would encourage uh, them to support the organization. They're located in our police annex building on uh, J Street. Um, I also had the opportunity to attend the retirement dinner for our former chief, uh, Tim Marison. It was a really good turnout. and. Um, Again, I want to wish him well. I really enjoyed working with uh, the former chief, and I'm hoping to see that relationship continue with our new chief. Congratulations on your appointment as well. Habit Burger um, has finally had its opening, and it's been something I've been waiting for for quite some time. And um, they had a soft opening, I think it was last Thursday. Uh, but I've had the opportunity to frequent them at least two times since that mm -hmm. particular date. And um, for those of you who like In-N-Out, uh, I think this is a little bit superior to In-N-Out. Um, you have various forms of breads that are grilled slightly in butter, mm -hmm. which makes the flavor enhanced. Um, you can get a lettuce wrap uh, hamburger. Uh, they offer... Uh, sweet potato fries, onion rings, as well as regular french fries, and for the healthy people, they have salads as well. So if you haven't tried Habits yet,
go develop yourself a habit and uh, enjoy the food. It's really great. Are they still open? All the time. No, I mean now. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You can go, after, you can go after the meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I might see you there. <laughs> uh, that's it for tonight, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's go on to uh, Mr. Silvera. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, congratulations, Chief. Um, look forward to many more years of you serving at that post. So congratulations again. Um, so I, I just want to put a special thank you to staff. I know with the Veterans Parade coming up, we had some issues with our our insurance company changing things on us kind of midstream and caused a little bit of panic on the veteran side of things and, and trying to match up what kind of insurance they needed to have to satisfy our RMA. So I wanted to thank Stacy and Bill um, for getting to the bottom of and, and making sure that uh, – we were able to satisfy those insurance needs, and the Veterans Parade will continue to go on. Um, then the last thing that I want to ask Stacy about, and maybe I don't know if this comes back in the form of a presentation or, or what, but it was recently brought to my attention that Los Banas is lacking in our efforts to try to uh, bring a homeless shelter to Los Banas um, and other jurisdictions they they're they're opening up a homeless shelter and so Stacy when it's been a, a, maybe I don't know how long ago maybe it was last year um, if you could refresh our memory on our strategy where we were trying to apply for some CDBG block grants um, actually went out talked to a property owner try to purchase a piece of property and uh, you know I, I just listen the homeless folks out there, you know, they're the, they're the people that everybody just wants to forget about, right? You, you know, you, you because of your own, um, I don't know what the word is, but you, you, you tend to forget about them. They are amongst us, and they, they have been for a long time. And, you know, we try to do everything that we can do, and we're, as a city, we're not forgetting about them. We, we have programs in place, and there's a lot of nonprofits in town. There's a lot of... Um, church groups in town that provide services for these folks all the time and and as a city we're, we're trying and I specifically remember that case because it was the gentleman that owned the property bought the property maybe at the height of the market and what what the grant would allow us to pay the money that we were able to to, to would be able to apply for the grant with is there was this this gentleman just there was no way I think he wanted to do it it's just that he would have been selling the property at a loss. He would have still owed money on it. So I just wanted to be known out there. And so, Stacy, if you could, you don't have to do it tonight, but at, at maybe at a future council meeting, bring back some of the things that we're working on and that we have been working on. And that's all I have for Nightmare. Thank you. Thank you. And, and for clarification, it was permanent housing we were working on, not a homeless shelter. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on. Thank you, Silvera. Let's go on to Mr. Freya. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Peace for Families Night, beautiful event. My choir kids sang. Kind of interesting. We did a Jamaican piece, and the DJ was from Jamaica, coincidentally. And he was very, very impressed with our Jamaican music. So it was a uh, lovely evening for a lot of support for people in a very, very difficult situation. And we thank all the people for putting that on and inviting us to sing and inviting every, the community there. And we had hot dogs and goodies and whatnot, <clears throat> games, prizes. So it's a great, great event. Um, <clears throat> Veterans Parade Saturday. Once again, I offer my regrets. A family member has died. I have a funeral to attend. Uh, <clears throat> otherwise, I would be there. Um, our veterans, of course, have served uh, our country and... Um, it's a great honor for them, a great way of honoring them uh, Saturday. And then, uh, Tim, can, if you're still listening, uh, Chief Marison, probably fishing by now. Uh, thank you. Congratulations. Mason, looking forward to many more years. Uh, I know that uh, I, I had the chance of teaching, help assisting Mr. Wolburn with the band years ago, and Mason was a barit young baritone player. 
And Mr. Wilburn, I'm sure, is very proud to watch uh, both of his students pass the uh, fire chief from one to the next. And uh, Tim, for those who don't know, Tim, Chief Marison was a drum major. Uh, so as a music teacher, it makes us very proud to see our music our musicians grow up and serve the world. And we thank, we, we're very grateful for that. Um, and I think that's all I have for tonight. Look, I guess we had a nice safe Halloween. I didn't hear, uh, all I heard was good. And so I know it was a lot of fun for us because we have two grandbabies. And uh, that's the highlight of our life. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Santos. I want to congratulate Chief Hurley. I know you'll do a wonderful job. I can't wait to sit down with you and listen to hear anything you have to say about your future plans. I um, also want to say thank you to Chief Marison. Also, if he is still listening, I want to thank you for your service. And it was also nice sitting down with you as well. Um, I want to say I'm looking forward to the Veterans Day Parade. I was able to help uh, them sell some tickets um, to help raise money for this parade. My husband is a veteran, so I'm, I'm looking quite forward to see what they've got. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, Mason, another local person. Fantastic. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, uh, former Chief uh, Marison, retired Chief Mar Marison, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he's, he's looking forward to spending time with his, his grandkids, uh, hunting, fishing, spending time more with family. Uh, it's a great opportunity for him, and uh, he served the city well for, for 30 plus years, and uh, we wish him a very happy retirement. Um, I attended, they had the, uh, uh, a safe alternative to Halloween last night at three of the, the churches, and I attended three, uh, the three that I knew of, and if I miss some, I'm sorry. But, uh, but I have to tell you that the, the pastors and the parishioners of this community organized such a safe event and an alternative to trick-or-treating where, where uh, kids were safe, they had games, uh, they had activities, candy, uh, and all at the, uh, the local churches. I, I can't tell you what a well-organized group it was in all three of the events that I attended. And I really appreciate uh, for our community the dedication and the effort to uh, put forth by uh, these individual churches to make sure that everyone had a safe Halloween. So thank you, and I've asked one of the pastors to get uh, to collect all the names for me so we can honor them at a future city council meeting, which, uh, which I think is just is absolutely imperative uh, for all the good works that, uh, that uh, these religious groups do. So thank you so much. And uh, the Vets Parade, don't forget there's a breakfast uh, on Saturday morning from uh, 7 to 9 a.m. for $7 at the Vets Hall, and then they're going to sponsor a lunch. So please, uh, before the Vets Parade and after the Vets Parade, uh, uh, there'll be food available. So with that, there is no closed session tonight, so we'll skip the reading of, uh, of that agenda item and go on to item 14. Adjourn to city to 6 p.m. Tuesday, November 7th, 2017 at the Community Center Grand Room located at 645 7th Street, Los Banos, California to conduct a transportation program and associated funding workshop for the city of Los Banos. And uh, you have a motion, yeah. So do I have a motion to do that? Mr. Silvera. Mr. I'll make a motion that we adjourn to Tuesday, November 7th, as stated by you. Okay. Mrs. John Johnson Santos? I'll second that. Okay. It's been motioned by Silvera, second by Johnson Santos, to approve item 14 as read by title. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None carried. Any further business? Okay. <laughs> Meeting adjourned at, uh, what time is it? 829.